So what's happened? My water pump has broke. Last night my daughter was in the middle of a shower and it just stopped flowing. Uh, so today I'm going to change it. I'm going to show you how we change our pump and then how we prime it to get it going. And it's a pretty simple process. Luckily for us, I have a pump in the shed because uh, two is one and one is none. So always make sure that you have a backup of important things like this pump. Still have the mad scientist sign up from a trick-or-treat party we did this Halloween. Here's my tool shed and this is one of the most important places on the homestead where I keep all sorts of tools and backup parts for things that I need. And luckily for us I've got a pump sitting right up here right next to all my my extra chainsaw and my extra laundry detergent I have a pump and so this is a brand new Flowjet pump and we are gonna install this um, as a replacement for the other Flowjet pump that's in there all right we're back at the pump here we're gonna get ready to install this new pump first thing you want to do is make sure that you cut off all power to the pump and so our pump is wired in our battery box and it just turns off with a simple on off switch. All right, now that we have the pump turned off, let's expose it to make it easier access. You can see this, I still have my old water pump here from before. Flowjet model 04325343. And this pump is a pretty good pump, but you know, they burn out every now and then. And I'm not surprised this pump burned out. We have filled up a thousand gallon pools with it and just let the water run way more than we should. It's uh, definitely gone through the ringer. And so when I bought this pump last, it was $250. And today I bought another one to make up for the one that I pulled out of the shed and it is $300 now so these pumps are raising going up in price and another reason why two is one and one is none you might as well buy an extra before prices go up okay so the pump is powered off all we have to do really is just un, um, unscrew the wire nuts like I said this power is coming straight from our battery box and the line, one end of the line leads to the water tank. And then this other side goes to our pressure tank and then back out to the house. So our pump has been disconnected. You can see that the white line goes with the red line on the pump and the black goes with the black. So all you have to do to disconnect this pump is pretty simple. You just lift up these tabs on either side Okay, just lift up the tabs on the side. All right, and the pump slips right out. You can see I didn't even screw this one down. So let's grab the new pump here. You can see, looks just like the old one. In fact, I um, always make sure I double check the model number when I get pumps to make sure that they match the old model and uh, this pump here will be hooked up exactly the same way that I took it off I don't need to use any of the extra fittings that they give me because I already have this intact but this is a sort of a filter air control lock this is often the, the problem with most of these pumps is you lose your air siphon and um, what I do is I just lightly unscrew it and that kind of creates a siphon that pulls the water through and I'll show you that piece a little bit later on it's already installed and then here are some fittings in case you have different type of fittings than what I currently have so yeah let's get this guy installed back on reinstall your water line so just push the tab up again Push the tabs up on either side, push the water line in, and then push the tab closed. It really is that easy to install one of these. Same thing on the other side, push the water line in, tab closed. Okay, so that is done. 
Next, you want to take your power line, white with red and black with black. You can see the red one is kind of a short line. I'm just going to use a wire nut over that. All you got to do is put them next to each other and twist. And the wire nut does the work for you of connecting those two wires together and keeping them nice and secure. Now on this other side, they kind of didn't really leave us much in the way of, uh, of wire lead here. So I'm going to get a razor blade. We're going to expose a little more wire and then we'll wire nut that up. Okay, so now we have a little more of the wire exposed. We can go ahead and wrap that up. So once again, just get nice close to each other and then go ahead and wrap it with the nut. And so that is rewired back together. I'm gonna test it out and make sure the pump has juice coming to it. And um, if it does, I'll turn it back off and then we gotta prime the pump. Okay, it's working. So let us prime the pump. I'll show you what to do there. Okay, so in order to prime the pump, you gotta make sure there's water in the line. There's a foot valve at the bottom of this and it doesn't really drop the water very well on its own unless it's primed. So what we do is just pour water and you could just scoop some water out and just fill it up until it's 100% full. Okay. So I like to get the cap on as quick as possible. Kind of create like a suction seal in there. And now we're gonna try to turn on the pump and see how it's going. Okay, that sounds like a good sound. The pump is slowly pressurizing, but it is stalled out. And we're sitting at 20, a little bit above 20. And it is slowly moving, but it should be moving faster than that. We're gonna check out a few things to see if we could get moving quicker. One area of concern tends to be this spot here. And something that you can do Sometimes, while it's running like this, unscrew it just a little bit. Try and get the air bubble out. All right, close it up. Let's see if that changed anything over here. You see that? We're up to 30 now. It is moving up to 40, and that's exactly what we want. Okay, that sounds like a good sound now. Now it sounds like it's really kicking. So let's see what happens when it reaches 40. Oh no, it's struggling. Look at that needle. Will it get there? Oh gosh, the suspense is killing me. All right, looks like our pump is actually gonna get to where we need to go. Will it shut off on its own? Come on, just there we go guys. We have water again. That is cool. So the pressure tank is geared to um, pressurize up to 40 PSI. And when it drops down to 20, it turns the um, pump on and starts going again but uh, that pretty much is set on its own. But other than that, we are good to go. Our pump is reinstalled and we have water again. All right guys, well thanks for joining me on my replacement of my water pump. I hope that helps you understand a little more about the, these pumps. They're a very simple system. They work great with off-grid solar. Just make sure you match up your uh, voltage with the solar system that you have and you should be good to go. These pumps uh, will probably last me between two to three years, depends on how hard I use it. They are a regularly moving part and so they go bad every now and then, it's just a fact of life. One thing I like to experiment is finding a way to get away from these pumps, a different way to pressurize our water. 
and that would be a great thing to do but for now we are relying on these pumps and as long as we have extra backed up in our shed we know that we will always have a pump to replace the one that we so if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below and plant that finger on the like button every like that this these videos get helps make sure that you get to check out our next video so thanks for watching everyone aloha till next time i'll see you later